This level one lab will cover M codes, how they're read by the CNC, sent to the ladder logic, and then verified by the control. At the end of this lab, you should know how to go about chasing an M code through the ladder logic and finding out why it's hanging on a fin signal. M codes, miscellaneous codes. These are used by machine tool builders to control external functions such as automatic doors, coolant pumps, tool changers, and so on. FANUC has grabbed five M codes that are standard. These are M0, M1, M30, M98, and M99. After that, the machine tool builder is responsible for assigning all of the M codes. Now, a machine tool builder's primary emphasis is to move iron. He wants to sell you a machine tool. In order to do this, it's easier for him to say that my machine programs like everything on your shop floor. It would be difficult for me to move a machine if I redesigned all the M codes. For instance, if I came up with this new machine that says, I've completely redesigned it, M6 is now your spindle forward command. But wait a second, isn't M6 a tool change? No, I made that M5 on this machine. Well, what commands the tool change? I made that M3. Hit the door. I don't want to buy your machine. I don't want to have to relearn to program all over again. So for this reason, machine tool builders copy off each other. There are certain M codes, such as M3, spindle forward, M4, spindle reverse, M5, spindle stop. You got an M6, which is your tool change, and M7 is your coolant. Now, it's difficult to sell a machine tool if you don't use the standard M codes, but there's nothing stopping a machine tool builder from doing this. Now, for the most part, the first 30 M codes are going to be pretty much the same. Everybody copies off each other on these. The problem is that after the first 30, there is no standardization. For instance, M71. What's M71 do? Well, on this machine, it opens the door. On that machine, it activates the robot. Well, on this machine over here, M71 starts the indexer. That's why when you're dealing with M codes, you have to use M codes with caution because they will not be the same from machine builder to the machine builder. Here's the way it works. The CNC reads an M code in the part program. This information is sent over to the PMC. The PMC does whatever it is that it's supposed to do. The PMC then tells the CNC it's finished. The CNC moves on to the next line in the part program. Now for the details. M codes, for the most part, are controlled by the PMC. To get a good grasp on how this works in the ladder, you need to have a grasp of the F and G addresses that are used inside the ladder logic. Remember that there are as many ways to write a ladder logic program as there are programmers. Take, for example, M6. When an M6 is read in the part program, it's sent from the CNC over to the PMC. This number is written to address F10 and sent to the PMC. As you may recall, the F addresses transfer information from the CNC to the PMC. We will get back to the F10 address in just a moment. The CNC will then send a start signal to the PMC, telling it to read the new M code. This is called the strobe signal. Typically, it's set up as address F7 bit zero. Once the PMC has a start signal, it will do whatever it is it's supposed to do. When it's done, it will send back a signal to the CNC saying that it's finished. This is the fin signal. In other words, the tool changer is done. The strobe signal will stay on until it gets the finish signal or the control is reset. The finish signal is typically G4.3 or G5.0. Remember, G addresses are sent from the PMC to the CNC. The CNC program will not continue past the M code until the finish signal is received. On older model controls, the diagnostic showing why the program has stopped will display waiting on fin. Modern controls simply display fin on the status line. Now what happens next 
depends upon who wrote the ladder logic. And there's as many ways to write a ladder program as there are programmers. The F address that the CNC wrote to the PMC can be used as a direct contact inside the ladder logic. Let's say M3 was called in the part program. A value of 3 will be written to address F10. A ladder program, written as shown, will produce the proper output. While this will work, the complexity would become a problem when dealing with hundreds of M codes. For this reason, most builders make use of a function statement that is available in the ladder logic. This is a code conversion function. It's called binary decoding, or decode for short. It can be used for a number of different things in the ladder. It is commonly used for M codes. Let's take a close look at how the decode statement works in the ladder. Now, a decode statement is a function statement. All function statements are given a unique number. In this case, FANUC is assigned sub 25 as the decode statement. Here's a breakdown on how the decode statement works. There are four lines in the decode statement. Line number one is for your setup information. More on this in just a moment. When the decode statement is told to start by a strobe signal, F7.0, it's going to take a look at line two. Line two has the address where the M code number that was just called is stored. Now each decode statement is responsible for certain number of M codes. Line 3 is the start of the M code numbers for this decode statement. This will be described in detail shortly. All the decode statements are going to wake up at the same time. They will all look to F10 to see which M code has been called. When the M code number read in line 2 falls in the range of a particular decode statement, it takes over. All of the other decode statements go back to sleep. The decode statement will then turn on a particular bit starting at the address shown on line 4. Only one bit is turned on at a time in the address. The address can be used as a contact in the ladder to start an operation. Here is an example. The starting address for the M-code statement is M8. A call of M8 will turn on R101 bit 0. A call of M9 turns on bit 1, M10 turns on bit 2, and so on. In the example used earlier, you will see that this number is set to a 2. This means that this decode statement handles 16 M codes. The starting address is 8, so this decode statement will handle M8 through M23. Once the output is turned on, it stays on. This is due to the strobe signal, F7.0, still being active. The strobe signal will remain active until the fin signal is received by the CNC or the control is reset. The fin signal, G4.3 or G5.0, is activated in the ladder logic by the machine tool builder. This happens once the M code operation has completed. For instance, the door is finished closing, the ATC operation has completed, or the indexer has completed its move. Let's look at a simple M code operation. For instance, your coolant on command. M7 is the typical command to turn the coolant on. M9 is the command to turn the coolant off. When the CNC reads M7, it's written to address F10 and turns on the strobe signal. The decode statement that is responsible for M7 turns on the appropriate output, in this case, R100 bit 7. This output is used to activate a real-world output, a Y address, that is used to turn on the coolant pump. A finish signal is activated in the ladder and sent to the CNC. All M codes must have a finish signal, otherwise the CNC will not clear the end of block and move on with the program. Once the fin signal is received, the CNC will turn off the strobe signal and R100.7 will turn off. The pump output will stay active due to the latching circuit shown here. When the CNC reads an M9 command, the process will repeat. In this case, R101 bit 1 will become active. This will break the latch on the pump, causing the pump to turn off. 
Once again, the CNC will not move on in the program until the fin signal is received. This rung in the ladder will provide the fin to the CNC for the M9 command. The R101.1 signal will go back low when this happens and the program will move on to the next line. 